Welcome to Overcomers Christian Fellowship International Church. Good morning, good morning, church. Take our seat. I appreciate someone beside you. Welcome, someone beside you. You're welcome. Into the house of God. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Yes, this morning we thank God for His grace upon our lives. Thank God for all that He has done. Uh, this is the last day, yes, of this month, if I'm not mistaken. And God has been faithful. He has been by us. He has been with us from January to this day. We can't count how many times He has, he has saved us. And so we continue to appreciate Him. We continue to worship Him. And also this morning, as I thank God for all that he has done in our lives and also in my life, I must also thank our fathers in the house, our father and our mother. Thank you so much for your spiritual leadership over our life. Thank you for your prayers, your support, and everything that you're doing for us. God will bless you. God will bless your family in Jesus' name. You will continue to grow stronger and stronger in the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you everyone. Thank you the Church of God. Thank you for coming this morning. I pray that we will all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, the word of God to us this uh, morning is titled Divine Visitation. Divine Visitation. This month as be tagged the month of divine appointment and of the truth it has been one appointment unto another in our lives and so it is fit that will cap it up with this topic divine visitation it is a massive uh, topic to consider and I just trust God that will help me uh, this morning to be able to deliver what he has laid upon my heart divine visitation and I'm sure just hearing the topic uh, many of us we know I know that we want that in our lives I mean how many persons want God to visit them because divine is simple divine is the means God visitation God visiting you a visitation from God let's break it down okay let's say maybe the mayor comes to visit you. How happy will you be? Okay, let's go further. Uh, maybe let's go to the queen. Coming to visit you. I'm sure you 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 will come in your pajamas. You you welcome the king and uh, the queen in your pajamas. Is that right? No. You come in your best because you know that from that moment your life will not be renewed. You can never remain the same. Even if it does not give you anything, just that she is coming to visit you, know you will be in the press, your name, I mean, it is life transforming. Now we are talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of heaven and earth, coming to visit us. And something that I know about uh, this church, this ministry, is that when the word comes, when when we, we when we tag a month something, it is it is it is settled in heaven so it is not just that okay god is okay it's not just that okay, we decided let's talk about divine visitation when the word comes it means that god is set to do it in our lives praise the living jesus so this word is coming at an opportune time and i don't want us to miss it so god is saying i am set to visit your life i don't know if you're excited about that but if you're excited, I want you to say Amen. Amen. So in, this morning we are talking about divine visitation. And uh, let's open our scriptures to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. There are so many instances of divine visitation in the scripture. And but quickly, let's look at Genesis 18 from verse 1. I'm just going to read the first three verses. He said, then the Lord appeared to him, talking about Abraham, 
by the trim, trim beet trees of Mamre. And he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And he saw them. Note that. He said, and he saw them. He ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have not found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. And there's this song that says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. I love that song. Say, pass me not by, O gentle Savior. This is an account of God coming to, to visit Abraham. He said, the Lord appeared to him in the heat of the day. And we know the story of, of Abraham from Genesis chapter 12. We know the particular challenge in his life. His challenge was not wealth. He was wealthy. But as wealthy as he was, he lacked his son. He lacked his son. And that has been the pain in his life. That has been the challenge in his life. And I'm sure sitting there, that was what he was thinking about. And the Lord appeared. God showed up in the midst of Abraham's biggest challenge. God showed up. And that's what God is going to do in your life. He's going to show up in that situation. I want you as we as we hear this word, that particular situation in your life, I want you to bring it before God. Because God wants to show up in that particular circumstance. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. God showed up. God appeared. Many of us will be thinking, God, when will you show up? When will this problem come to an end? And at this instant, God showed up in the life of Abraham. Hallelujah. But that is not where I'm going. That is not the most important thing about divine visitation. Verse 2 and verse 3 are, they are more important than verse 1. He said, so he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, three men. God did not come the way Abraham was expecting. Okay? The scripture said God appeared. Of course, the person writing the scripture knew that it is God. But the scripture said that he appeared as what? As three men. Did he appear as an angel? Did he appear with wings? No, he did not appear in a special way. But what something that confirmed me and something that is very significant, significant is that Abraham was able to recognize that these are not men, but this is God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is where, that is the key. Divine visitation. The problem is not that God has not visited you. The problem is not that God will not visit you today. The problem is that will you recognize when God visits you? Will you know that moment? And that's why when I, I you know, I always say in this church, be expectant. There is the moment that God is going to meet your particular need, you may not be expecting, it may be during Bible study, it may be during the prison worship, just one instant. Abraham recognized. And in Luke chapter 19, verse 44, Jesus Christ lamented over Jerusalem. He said, Woe unto you because you do not know the last part, because you did not know the time of what? Hey, this is where the problem is. He said, Woe unto you, you are destroyed. Everything you have built is destroyed. Why? You did not know the time of your visitation. I pray you will not miss your time of visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. God will visit you. God is visiting you. But will you recognize the time? So your prayer must be. It's a prayer I always pray. God, I must not miss your visitation. I must not miss when you are speaking. I must not miss 
When you say I should move, I must not miss it. When you say it is time to leave, I must not miss it. I must leave, I must move. The scripture, Psalm, verse, uh, Psalm 1, he said it will be like a tree planted by the rivers of, of water, which bringeth forth its fruit in what? In due season. When your season comes, I pray you will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham was able to recognize in First Chronicles 12, 32, uh, 32, the scripture spoke about the sons of Issachar. He said these people, they are people that knew the time. They knew what Israel must do at the time. There are people who are sensitive. This is about being sensitive to the Spirit of God. You have to be sensitive. God is going to move. A lot of times you say, God visit me. He has visited you, but you did not know. Hallelujah. And I pray this morning that God will open our eyes to see, to know the time of our visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham's response to the divine visitation to produce his miracle. Do you know that those men could have come? Those three men could have come and gone like that. And he would not know. He would have, they would have just gone. In fact, he made out he might have not just invited them, but he knew, he recognized, he said, no, this one must come. They must come in. So when he recognized them, they came in and in verse 11, okay, in verse 9, he said, then they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? That was what they, we, they did not say anything to him. They asked, they did everything, and after he, he had, and when they saw that he has responded rightly, they said, where is Sarah? They knew that was where his problem is. There's another person quickly in scripture, that identified the presence of God. That blind man who told Christ, he said, well, the scripture said, when he heard that Jesus Christ was going about, Jesus Christ was around, he said, son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, the, the scripture said, I think it's in Luke 9, they said, keep quiet, keep quiet. It is not you that Jesus wants to hear. He said, no, I will shout because this is my time. Of divine visitation. Say to someone, it is my time for divine visitation. It's my time for divine visitation. So you have to grab that moment. You have to grab it and tell God, today is my day. And I don't know that. I want that to be your prayer. Today, this morning, that as this message is going, Lord, it is my time. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just early this month, we were praying here, and God gave me a word. And that is what I'm going to minister unto us this morning. He said that we should ask Him to send His word. We were praying here on Tuesday, I think 28th of, of May. He said, Pray that I send my word. When that prayer dropped in my mind, I was like, send your word. I didn't understand it. But I started praying and God started opening my eyes to the meaning. One God said, I want to send my word. And so that's why this morning it's going to be divine visitation by the word of God. There's this song that said, You are the Lord. That he left me. I want us to sing that song. You are the Lord, my healer. He sent his word. You sent your word. And he Sing it with faith. You are 
to know something. And God began to explain to me what it means when God sends his word. When God speaks, it is to reveal it in wisdom. When God speaks, he reveals what? Eating wisdom. It tells you things that are not known. Things, the secret things that even science is, science cannot know. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is good. But when he sends his word, it is to accomplish the impossible. So I'm going to be speaking about two dimensions of the operation of the word of God this morning. Again, I said, when God speaks, it is to reveal eating things, things that you cannot know, things that science cannot discover. And that is good. We pray that God should speak up in our situation. But there is a dimension that is higher. When he sends his word, it is to accomplish the impossible. And that will be your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. When God speaks, let's quickly look at that. Like I said, it is to re reveal hidden secrets and to impart wisdom. That is the first dimension of the operation of the Word of God. When God speaks, hey, when God speaks, Great things happen. He spoke to the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. Oh, the children of Israel, they were in dilemma and they were in trouble. The Red Sea was in front of them, and the army, the best army in at, 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 at that time in the world, was behind them. And this was not even just that. Pharaoh was there with them. He was in front. And they cried unto God. Look at verse 15 of that verse. And he said, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to do what? To go forward. I declare this morning the word of God to your life in that situation that. It's, it's an impasse. It's as if you have are, you are reached the end of your strength. The word of God to you this morning is that go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. God spoke and he said they should move forward. And at, at, when he said that, he told Moses what to do. He gave him the wisdom. Stretch your hand. And of course, we know the story. When God speaks, a red sea parted. Again, he spoke to the disciples after they have toiled all night. Professional fisherman. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. He said, what did he say to them? He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. For a catch. Thank you. Let down your nets. They've toiled all night. There are, there are people in this place just like me, you've been toiling, you've been, you, in terms of effort, you are, you are the best. Hallelujah. You have put in the effort. But this morning, God is telling you, God is speaking to you, launch into the deep and let down your, your nets and you will have a catch in the name of Jesus. Amen. When God speaks, He reveals, He gives you that wisdom. And that is my prayer. You will receive supernatural wisdom. You will receive supernatural wisdom Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In that circumstances, in that thing, in that situation. What you need to do to have a breakthrough, God will reveal it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And God is speaking to you right now. He said, let down your net. What is the meaning of net? The next year signifies something. It signifies human effort. Hallelujah. Amen. The next year signifies what? Human effort. He was telling Peter and all the professionals, said, let down, let down. I know you've, 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 you've tried. I know you've made the effort. But now it is my time to show up. It is someone's time. It is God's time to show up in your life in the name of Jesus. He said, let down your net. 
commit your effort into my hands and you will have a drought. You will have a big cut. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God is speaking into our life this morning. He said, surrender your effort. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, those that wait upon the Lord shall what? Shall renew your strength. That is the meaning of letting down your net. It is not being idle. It is not doing anything. But it is what? Committing that effort into the hands of God. And He will renew your strength. Though you feel tired. But He will renew your strength. Say, and you will mount up with wings like eagles. And you will run and not be weary. And you will walk and not faint. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. When God speaks, it is most likely it will most likely look, look foolish. That's another thing for you to know. He said to, to Peter and his friends, let down your net. And they looked at him. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? How do I go back Oh, All the other fishermen, the fishermen, they, they are waiting to see the result of what I have done throughout the night. And you're saying I should let down my net. But he said, but at your word, I will do it. At your word, I will do it. And he did it. And this month, this second half of this year, as you obey the word of God, great things will happen in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, when God instructs, when God speaks, he instructs and he guides. He tells you things to do. He corrects you, he rebukes you. Just like he, got, he, he, he spoke to Joseph in Matthew 2, 13. Not to go a certain way. To take out the child and to leave. And by that, he was saved. That is the first dimension of the operation of the word of God. When God speaks, like I said, he reveals in eating wisdom. He imparts wisdom. That will be our portion. I'm praying for you this month. You will need wisdom. I was talking to a brother about wisdom. The scripture says the principal thing. And the funny thing is that we, we, we don't spend enough time asking for wisdom. And the scripture says it is the principal thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So if the scripture says it's the principal thing, what, what does that mean? It should be the bulk of your prayer. Solomon was given a blank check. Ask me anything. And even God said it afterward that though you could have asked for the life of your enemies, but because you are wise enough to ask me for wisdom, I will bless you with everything. If you don't take anything as you're going today, let wisdom. Every morning, ask for God's wisdom before you go out. Even if you forget to ask for the life of your enemy, because I know we love to do that a lot. Hallelujah. I know. <laughs> We like to do that. But ask for wisdom first. And that will be the portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Numerous scriptures show us how powerful it is when God speaks up in the life and situation of people. But there is a dimension of grace that is more powerful and more glorious than when God speaks. And that is when he sends his word. When God sends his word. I mean me to say that the greatest intervention of God in human affairs or in human affairs comes when it decides to send his word. The greatest intervention of God comes when it decides. It doesn't do it often or when it does it. That was what happened in Genesis 18. God has been speaking, but God came. He sent His word, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be explaining that to us. Now, when I said it is the greatest intervention of God in human affairs, you may be asking me, how how do you know? Now, listen to this: it is possible to disobey instructions from God. God can speak and tell you do this, and you will disobey. You will not do it. You may miss it. You may not actually be listening. And that will result in failure. 
Also, the devil, if God sent angels, of course, we know what happened to Daniel. What happened? God had released his blessing. How many days? I think 21 days. But in the angel said, and devil withstood me. So devil can withstand angels. So you can miss the instruction of God. You can miss it when God speaks. And even if God sends angels, the devil can also resist them. But there is something that God, the devil cannot resist. That is when God sends his word. That cannot fail. That cannot be stopped. And that is why we have sang that song that God should send his word unto us. There are so many, there are numerous scriptures in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible that talks about God sending his word unto us. Quickly, let's look at the life of Samuel. First Samuel 3 verse 1. Everything that I'm saying this morning is so that I'm trying to change the kind of prayers that you pray. I'm trying to open your eyes. So that you can begin to enjoy the divine visitation of God from this moment. Hallelujah. Amen. I will stay together. Yes. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the person beside you. Are you sleeping? Tell the person, are you sleeping? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you are sleeping, praise, praise the Lord. Amen. If you are sleeping, shout hallelujah. 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 <laughs> so what do you are sleeping? <laughs> Amen. Don't sleep at your time of station. First Samuel 3 verse 1. I want us to understand the meaning of the war. The war. First Samuel 3 verse 1. Okay. The scripture, the scripture said, Then the boy Samuel minister to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Jump to verse 7. It said, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. This, is what, this was after God came. He was calling Samuel. And he kept running to Eli. Master, what? Here I am. Here am I. And the master said, I did not call you. Verse 7, he now said, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. No, no, no was the word of the Lord. Yet what? Yet was, no was the word of God yet to be revealed to him. He did not know what the word was. Verse 20, let's go to verse 20. Okay, let's start from verse 19. He said, So now, so Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his word to fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Bathsheba knew that Samuel had been established as the prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. Let's read together. By the word of the Lord. The Lord revealed itself to Samuel in Shiloh. By what? By, by the word of the Lord. So what is the difference, you will ask, between the Lord and the word of God? Because he has separated it there. He said God revealed itself to him by something. By the word of the Lord. That was the first place where the concept of the word of God, God really, sh the scriptures sh shine light into what the word, the entity, the personality of the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 107, verse 11. Taking us somewhere, Psalm 107, verse 11. Verse 20. Let's read verse 20. Okay, sorry. Let's read that verse 11. It's also right now. Because they rebelled against the words of God and despised, despised the counsel of the Most High. Verse 20, he said, And he sent his word, and he healed them, and delivered them 
from their destruction. God is sending his word to deliver you from destruction this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we see the word of God as an entity, as a personality in this place. Now let me make it clearer. Let's open our scriptures to John chapter 1 verse 1. This is this is my favorite, of course, it's in my name. So, of course, it has to be my favorite scripture. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. It said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, it said, He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3. He said, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Verse 4, in him is life, and the life was the light of man. Verse 5 said, and the light shines in darkness. Notice that preposition. He said, the light shines where? In darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Yes. This scripture wanted us to understand something about the world. And he was bringing the word. He wanted us to get something. But most times we have not gotten that revelation. He said the word was with God. When? When? In the beginning. In the, beginning. the word. He used capital. Capital W. The word was with God. In the beginning. By it. Everything was created without it nothing was created verse 14 let's read verse 14 together verse 14 is, is very interesting it said and the word became and the word became letters no and the word became sounds no it became flesh and what is the name of that flesh what is the name of that flesh? Jesus. Jesus Christ. And dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. But remember, he said that word has been from the beginning. A lot of times, most of us, we thought that the revelation or the coming of Christ for the first time on earth was in Genesis. I mean, it was in Matthew chapter 1. Was that no? Jesus Christ has been from everlasting. He was right there in Genesis chapter 1. Let's open our scripture. Genesis chapter 1. We will say, when did Jesus Christ appear? When was it? When was it with God? It was not mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. I didn't see it there. No, it's, you have not seen it. But he's there. Hallelujah. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I've preached on this before. Between chapter 1 and chapter, I mean, verse 1 and verse 2, there were, there were thousands of years. So the fact that they wrote it together, is, it does not mean that it was immediately. When God created the earth, it was perfect. It was good. Everything was good was very was okay and that was before the fall of lucifer but in verse 2 lucifer the devil was already falling and he had come to destroy you know the ministry of the devil he has come to kill to to uh, to, to steal to kill and to destroy and he had manifested his ministry on earth the bible says in verse 2 the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and that looks so much like the life some someone's life the situation is certain in some people's lives today it looks you i mean you don't even understand what is happening everything looks without form everything looks empty and darkness was over the face that this darkness had dominion darkness was raining And verse 3, look at what God did. He said, then God said. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 3. And God did what? Said. And God what? Said. And that is where the world. You didn't see it before. That's where the world. Came in, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
The word is not let us combine into a meaningful sound. It is a person. And that person is Jesus, the Son of the living God. In the New Testament, the Son of God, who is the second personality in the Trinity, was named Jesus. And after his death, after his death, he obtained the name Christ. Because many of us, we used to think that Christ is the son of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. No, Christ is not his son. His son. He obtained the name after his death. And that's why the scripture says that he has been given a name. That is what? Above all name. What is that name? That name is not Jesus. It is Christ. Christus, the Messiah. But the Son of God did not come into existence in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Son of God was revealed as the Word, sent by God. Therefore, Jesus in the New Testament is the same Word which had been from the foundation of the Word, by which all things were created, sent on a mission. And that's why we are talking about when God sends his word. Jesus Christ is the sent word of God. That is it. That is the definition. Jesus Christ is what? The sent word of God. It doesn't come. Even when Jesus came in the New Testament, he was sent to fulfill a particular thing. Just as when God said, God said, let there be. And at that moment, he sent Jesus to go and the word remove and restore and destroy the work of the enemy John chapter 10 verse 10 John chapter 10 verse 10 said I have come John chapter 10 verse 10 what does he say the thief does not come but to, except to steal to kill and destroy now this is the mission of Jesus he said I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly and that has been his mission from the beginning from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to from from there onward now let's look at the work I've established that the word that we're talking here when God sends his word that word is no less a personality than Jesus Christ himself and that is why I said it is the greatest intervention when God sent his son everything else has failed in your life everything else has failed your effort has failed your wisdom has failed your uncles everything has failed but this morning God is going to send his word who is Jesus Christ into your life in the name of Jesus quickly let's look at three operations of when of the word of God when God sends his word since we have established in verse 3 that when God said, when God said, He sent His word, which was Jesus Christ. Let's look at what the word did. From Genesis verse 1, verse 3, He said, Let there be light. And of course, immediately there was light. And I've explained to us once before, let me remind us let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Can someone say, Let there be light? Declare, let, let there be light. In my situation, let there be light. In that situation, you know it. Can you just say, Let there be light? In the name of Jesus. That is God's way. When there was challenge, when there was a trouble, He did not mourn, He did not do anything. He said, Let there be light. So when you are confronting situations, the first thing for you to say is, God, let there be light. Hallelujah. And there was light. It brings, when the word comes, number one, it brings light in darkness. It brings light in darkness. Darkness is always there. If we switch off these lights, cover everything, you know that darkness is here. But when there is light, he said that and the light shines and the darkness cannot come, they cannot overcome it. That is why we must be continuously connected to God. 
so that that light continues to shine in your life. Now, the light here, let me explain what God was saying here. The light here signifies the creative power. Note it. It signifies the creative power of God that makes or causes things to be. A. It's the, it signifies what? The creative power of God that makes or causes something to be. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, light here does not signify the sun or the moon or brightness. Because a lot of times when we read that verse, we always think that, oh, when God said light and the light came and everything was visible. No, that place was not talking about the sun and the moon. It was the later in verse 14 that he created the sun and the moon. So if that place was not talking about the sun and the moon, it's not talking about this light that we see. That place is talking about the creative power of God. The creative power of God, we can liken it to electricity. This is not electricity. This thing that you're seeing is not electricity. Electricity itself is inside the wire. You can go and touch it, then you know that it's there. Amen. No, don't say pardon, don't say reference you should go and touch. No. Hallelujah. Yeah. This this light that God said here, it's not visible. It is the creative power of God that makes things to be. You need that power. And the, 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 the typology of that light in the New Testament is what? Can someone guess it? The typology of this light that in the New Testament is what? Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He told the disciples, he said, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. What did he say? He said, and you will receive power. Another word for power is you know, electricity. You will receive enabling power. This, the, the electricity can be, uh, can be here and you will not notice it. But when you connect it to a ball, you will see it come out. That is the first thing that you need. And that is the first thing that God is releasing into your life today. The power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will witness that power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It, is, it is. Let me not use it. It's, it's, it's an error to use it. It is the creative power of God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do anything. You cannot enjoy the visitation of God. The Holy Spirit. And He is the one that will bring that light and make you. He said that you will receive power. Power to, to make wealth. Power to overcome sicknesses. Power to be the best. Power to dominate. Hallelujah. Amen. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. So when God said, let there be light, he established his creative power. He established the creation process. I don't have an, a problem with, with evolution. The theory of evolution, I don't really have a problem with it. I only have a problem with the starting point. How can you say that, that everything that we see today began with a big bang? Is it because the big bang is what we are seeing in verse 3. God spoke and things began to happen. But science cannot understand it. It is too high for them to understand. God set in motion the process of creation when he said, let there be light. This creative power or creation power of God is what makes everything to be. So when the word of God comes, he brings that into your life. Now let me say this, when God sends his word into your life, his presence comes into your life for the work of creation. For the work of creation. Hey, the work of creation is about to begin in your life this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, when God sends his word or his word, he restores order in chaos. When God says his word, he restores order in chaos. From verse 4 to verse 10 in the story of creation, it was God. God did not create anything new. Have you noticed? He did not create anything new from verse 4 to verse 10. He created light. He said, and he called it light. He named it verse 4. He said, let there be firmament in the midst. That is, 
The separation of waters from waters, it was already there, but all of them were in disarray. Everything was without order. When God sent his word, when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, when he sends his word, everything that has been scattered in your life, so many people, we just wrote a tract recently, many people, they say, I don't need Jesus, but you are lonely. You said you don't need Jesus. You are confused. You don't need you said I don't need Jesus. Yet you don't know what tomorrow holds for you. You don't know Jesus. You said I don't need Jesus. And you are disillusioned and you're suffering from depression. And you're still saying, I don't need Jesus. And you are being given antidepressants. What what does he do? It, it alters your mona, your 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 own moods. That's what it does. And the king said, I don't need Jesus. So what that is what you need. The word of God. When he comes, he brings order. And I pray for us this morning. Everything that looks disorderly, everything that has gone, you know, your marital life, you don't even understand where it is. You don't understand. I mean, everybody is getting married, you everybody is getting their job, everybody is having kids, but Things that are not just working, it is not as if you can't do it, you have it in you, but everything is out of place. But I'll declare this morning, as you hear this word, order is restored in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. When God speaks, you know Psalm 11, God is addressing something this morning, that's his foundation, he told me particularly, the foundation, our foundation. Psalm 11 verse 3, he said something very it, it, it was it's a rhetoric question and he didn't give an answer. He said, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing. You cannot do anything but to pray. Why? Because you can't go back to your foundation. You cannot do anything about your foundation. You don't know what has gone wrong when you were born. There are some congenital diseases that you cannot do anything about. It has been it's from right from the womb. There are things that have gone wrong. There are places that your parents put you through that you cannot change. If the foundation is destroyed, you cannot do anything, but God can do something about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why you need God to send his word. Because the word of God is past, present, and future. He is able to come back into your path and to correct that foundation and restore order. That is what the word of God does. And that will be your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that is wrong in your foundation, that is bringing manifestation, that's the product, that's, that's what happens. When things go wrong, they don't necessarily manifest that point. It may be five years, it may be ten years after, then they start showing up. They start showing up. There are, there are defects even in your genes, in your DNA right now. There are some that they have not even manifested. It may be when you're 40, 45, that that expression is going to come out. And that is why you need the word of God that sets things in order. And that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lastly, as I round up, when God sends his word, it creates new things. Hallelujah. Who wants a new thing? I don't know this guy. It's just me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want something new. That's what it says. Do something new. Hey, my love. Something new. Hey, my love. See people in the trailer.
19. I want us to read together. He said, let's one to three go. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall speak for. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert place. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. When God sends his word, he creates new things. And that is what happened. That was what happened from Genesis verse 1, chapter 1 from verse 11 to 31. He began to create. There are things that have gone wrong in your life. God will be other sin. But there are certain things that are absent. There are two, there are two cases. Number one is because the scripture said that the devil comes but but to steal, to kill those two, they can still, they may still be. You can God may restore them. Because of course, things that are stolen can be restored. You can get them back. Things that have been killed, God can raise them. Hallelujah. But when it is destroyed, it has been, it has been, it is out of, it is destroyed. It is, it cannot work again. But the thought that is the end. The enemy thought he has destroyed you. The enemy thought that that is the end. But when God sends his word, he said, oh, you think that is the end? No, I will do a new thing. And will you not know it? Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing in your life this morning in the name of Jesus. Because you came today, the day of divine visitation, something new that you have not known before is happening from this day in your life in the name of Jesus. New doors have been opened in the name of Jesus. New jobs have been opened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In conclusion, Jesus is the word of God and is ready to visit your life today to restore and to create new things and new experiences. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet and just pray to God. Just pray to God. Lord, Lord, do a new thing in my life. Now, I want you to say now, God. I, you know, it, it, it is not every time that you have the opportunity to say, to tell God that I do it now. But by the grace and the anointing in this house this morning, you are permitted to tell God, now, do this new thing. Do a new thing in my life now. And let it manifest. Begin to pray. I'm not praying for you. I'm praying for myself now. So pray for yourself. Lord, do a new thing in my life. Something the scripture say that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we can think, what we can imagine, according to the power which is the Holy Spirit that works in us. Begin to tell God, Lord, you will use it now in my life and it will be manifest. You will have a testimony, you will testify very soon. You are testifying very soon. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to you. Something new, let's that some more time in my life. Something new, 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 in my life.
sanctuary. We cup our hands to give you the glory. We cup our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our day. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our day. We cup our hands. We cup our hands in the sanctuary. We cup our hands.
Evangelism, discipleship, prophetic prayers, and many more. Join our weekly services. On Sunday, we have our worship service, 10:30 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Mondays, Bible studies, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. To join our house fellowship on Fridays at 15 Piston Way, St. Buddha's, between the hours of 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Join our student fellowship at the Hawa moment with the Plymouth University student at Babbage 002 Lecture Room, Plymouth University, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Second Friday of every month, Operation Push, pray until something happens, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Worship with us today, every first Sunday of every month. Holy Communion Service, second Sunday of every month, prophetic words and declaration, third Sunday of every month, prayers and deliverance service, fourth Sunday of every month, victorious praise service, fifth Sunday of every month, youth service. Do you desire to choose in your academics, career, business, relationship? Join our quarterly breakthrough prayers every last Friday of every three months, 7 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. Visit us today at Ubacoma Sanctuaries, 15 Garden Terrace of Plymouth Mott McLean, PL4 CEP, Plymouth, United Kingdom. For more information and details on our programs and past worship services, visit our website at www w.tocfi. You can also call these numbers for more information. 07862-710-378 or 07780-994-236. General Hobasia, OCFI Church, Pastor Mike and Pastor Mrs. Kustana, Ilila Dewa says, This is your year of dominion restoration. You have more than conquerors. Mm -hmm.